Um, okay, so today is we're talking about brand harmony, but I wanted us to first read this definition. A brand is the message the customer perceives about the product, which may be something altogether different than the message the marketer intended to send. So I need everyone to raise their right hand, please. Say, I will agree during this presentation that this is the definition of a brand. Thank you, okay. Um, because it, it, and that's why we're having the branding seminar with Will next week is because when we say brand, most people think of a logo or an icon. And in real estate, whether you have a logo or an icon, you are your own brand. And that's what we're really talking about um, today. And the book I've read is, is Brand Harmony by Steve uh, Yastro. And I went on his blog the other day, and uh, he had a really interesting story. And I thought I'd, I'd read it real quick. He's written another book called Ditch the Pitch. I haven't read that yet, but it talks about dropping scripts and, as we mentioned earlier, just having conversations with people. But this was a, a call from one of Steve's recent clients. And the caller said, a senior executive was very interested in working with us, and his company would be a great fit for our product. But after he met with his C-suite colleagues, he called me to say they weren't interested in meeting with me. And this is what Steve said to his client. Steve says, your problem is that your brand isn't portable. After you communicate it to a prospect, that person can't pick it up and take it with them and communicate it to someone else. So the, issue, the point he's making is a client made a presentation to a person, a company, and they went to present that and share it with the other decision makers, and they couldn't communicate it effectively or clearly to them to be able to make a decision. So they declined to allow that person to present to them, which I feel like is sometimes a lot what happens in real estate. You talk to someone, and it may be the other person that's actually the decision maker, or you go talk to a company about how you can help them with their employees, and that may not be the only, per only decision maker, but your brand is, is that message. And that's why I wanted us to start with that. It's the message they perceive about your product or services. So the question we're trying to answer today is, is your brand portable? And when you speak to someone about your services that you're offering, do they have a clear impression of you and what services you're providing? Is your brand portable? What that really means is, is your message portable? If I go to meet with Alan about selling some of his land or his house, and he goes back to talk to Denise, who makes 95% of the decisions, Okay. She makes, the major let's just say, the majority of the decisions. And Denise asks, well, Alan, why should we use rentals? And Alan doesn't have a real clear message or answer to tell her. You know, it, it wasn't clear in my conversations with him on why I'm the agent for them. It's going to make it real hard for him to convince Denise that I'm the agent to work with. And that, that, so that's what we mean by portable. Um, so to understand that, we want to talk about the customer life cycle. How do customers move through this life cycle with your brand? First, it's learning about you, becoming your customer, and then hopefully ultimately being your customer. Because you're not the only one to communicate your brand story to customers. We talk a lot about relationships and referrals. And the way to earn referrals is to make it easy for those people to talk about you to their network of friends. And you have to blend your marketing and branding to create brand harmony with your customers. It's not just running a cool ad or using a catchy icon or graphic. It's that entire process of weaving it together that creates that message. So how do you understand what it sounds like to be your customers? 
if we're dependent on others to communicate our story, because as much as we like to go around talking to 100 people a day to tell them how great we are about real estate, you know, it's really hard to do. But that's one reason why we promote video so much. That gives you a platform to promote your message to people anytime they're watching it. So if you're not receiving referrals from past clients, or worse, I told a new agent, a prospective agent yesterday, he asked me why I was so excited about new people entering the business that had no real estate experience in the past. And this was a statistic from Leading RE that 80% of consumers that used a real estate agent said they would use one again. They just wouldn't use the one that they just worked with. I mean, have you ever had a client that you sold property to and then they sold it with someone else or bought? I mean, that's happened to me tons of times. Um, following up with them, not clients don't always understand the message and why they should work with you again. So how do you find out what it sounds like to be your customer? That's why all these companies are uh, issuing surveys. I already received two surveys from Las Vegas. The Wynn wants to know how great my stay was and Delta wants to know how great my flight was. Cause, why? Because they want to know what it's like to be their customer so they can improve on that experience. So they understand what it's like because they want to be real clear about the message they're sending. Uh, of course, they don't want you, you know, going on social media and talking about how bad the experience was. They want to try to understand how the experience was before you realize that it was that bad. So how do you do that? You just sold someone a house and say, look, do you mind hanging out in the parking lot for a few minutes? I'd really like for you to fill out this survey about how good of a job I did. No, but there are ways to do surveys. You can do follow-up lunches or coffee. You know when you feel like they may have reservations about using your services again or referring. Even if they don't, it's great to follow up with people to understand what you did really well and why they enjoyed working with you so much so that you can build a better foundation under those skills. And that's something really hard to do is to learn what it sounds like to be your customer. But everyone is sending out surveys because they want to know because they want customers to be happy and they want them to use their services again. So we'll talk about some ideas and strategies uh, throughout this year about how to understand that because that's the best way to earn referrals from clients is to understand what it's like to be your customer because a brand's not what you say you are you can't get up and say I am this your brand is what your customers think you are and that's that's hard to always achieve um, because if your customers are saying this and you don't understand what they're saying, you, do, you may not know what you're doing wrong or how you can improve your services. But if they say you're the best agent in this neighborhood that cares the most, then that's what you are, and that's great. But if they say you're the best agent in this neighborhood, but they never communicate with me at all, that's... That's still good, you're the best, but the message is you don't communicate. So for someone that wants an agent that communicates, they may value the communication above being the best qualified uh, agent for that market that's knowledgeable. So when you understand what your customers think you are, it can help you identify uh, with other opportunities to work with people because folks care about different things. Most everybody cares about communication. And there are a lot of agents that are really great at what they do, but they don't connect with some people because customers value different qualities in people. And great branding and marketing are about closing the gap between intention and perception. It's not about telling a story. Uh, it's about having your stories understood. And that's why creating a brand, a personal brand, a story about you using video 
helps people understand why they should use you as a real estate agent. Because after you communicate that to a prospect, that person should be able to pick it up, take it with them, and say, Alan Parm is the most caring agent in Columbus, Georgia. Mike Phillips is the land expert for Harris County. You know, Matt Sled is the king of communication. He communicated so much that it almost drove me crazy. Whatever it is, you need to make it easy for your clients to share with other people what's special about you so that they can easily understand that. Because branding's not about just getting your name out there, getting in the marketplace. It's about getting a customer to say, I want it. You know, I want to work with so-and-so. I want to use Guarantee Mortgage. I want to work with Bickerstaff Parm. So, we're giving you a little homework. Think about your follow-up plans uh, during the listing, after the sale. How do you communicate with your customers? Because communication is the number one reason why consumers do not call uh, the agent that sold them the property to actually sell the property when they're ready to move. It's about communication. And, and think about how you're communicating to them and try to understand how they perceive your services. And if asked about you, what would they say? Is it easier for them to say, well, why should I use Alan Parm? If they don't know, then, that, then that's a problem. You've got to make it easy for clients to understand why they should use you because if they do, they will tell everybody and they will generate more referral opportunities for you. So two weeks from today, we're going to be following up on brand essence that kind of ties us together. But I, I hope everybody will, if they're available, come to the branding seminar on Monday from 10 to 12. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Will Handel and I are leading it, and we're going to dig a little deeper into branding and what that really means. Because you don't have to create uh, an icon or a logo immediately. The best thing for you to do is figure out what is your style, what is your message. And as you start working through that, complement it with a design that people can easily associate with. And that allows your brand to be easily understood and portable so that people will say, I want to work with Mary, I want to work with Mike, I want to work with Ansley, I want to work with Carson, Kappa, Matt, Jenny, Alan, Julie. When customers start doing that, it makes this business so much easier. People want to help you because you've helped them with one of the most important decisions that they make in buying a home. So you have to make it easier for them to understand how they can help you with your business. And that's what branding is. It's that message that they're, they're receiving. So I appreciate you all being here today and hope you all will come on Monday for the branding seminar. And we'll be checking on your homework. You don't have to share it with me or anyone. It might be fun for you to kind of go through that and kind of look at uh, people you've worked with and what would they, if you called them up, or if a third party called them up and said, how was it working with so-and-so? What, what would they say? Hopefully they'd say great things. But there may be a consistent pattern there that you don't recognize that would help you connect with more people that appreciate that message and service. It's, uh, it's pretty general um, because we're si we send it out to everybody. Uh, I'd have to, we'll pull a copy and send it to everybody. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> last week made me realize that we always have an opportunity to reevaluate what we're doing and improve. And I'm, I'm gonna make a note for us to look at that because I started filling out a survey for Delta yesterday. They wanted to know. I thought it was two pages, and then it went to four, and then the next page, I was like, 
No, I'm not going to fly with you because you want to know too much about the experience. Why didn't you use Wi-Fi? Did you not use the... It's like, <laughs> it, some surveys can be overwhelming. And you want it to be personal and you want someone to be honest. So that's a great point, Mary. We'll reevaluate that. Um, review surveys. Because um, we're always open to suggestions on how we can improve that. Thank you all for being here today. Hope you all will come on Monday for the Brandon Seminar. And thank you, Jenny. That was great.